Welcome to another math lesson. This is Mr. Pi. Today we're going to be talking about a geometry topic related to chords and arcs. If you happen to be working out of a Prentice Hall geometry book, uh, copyright 2009, that would be section 12.2 from your textbook. A segment whose endpoints are in a circle are called a chord. In the diagram, the related chord and arc segment PQ and arc PQ. You can see in the circle here, we have segment or chord PQ and the related arc PQ. It would be good to note at this time that not only do we have a arc and a chord, but we also have a central angle. And here we have a central angle. We could name that angle POQ or just angle O. But uh, central angle POQ is related to chord PQ and arc PQ. The following theorem is about related central angles, chords, and arcs. It says, for example, that if two central angles in a circle are congruent, then so are the two chords and two arcs that the angles intercept. We could say here that central angle POQ intercepts chord PQ and it also intercepts arc PQ. If, again, if you're working out the out of the Prentice Hall Geometry book, copyright 2009, this theorem can be found on page 670. Theorem 12.4 says within a circle or in congruent circles that congruent central angles have congruent chords. Part 2 says congruent chords have congruent arcs. And part 3 says congruent arcs have congruent central angles. Now, when I refer to these later on in the lesson, I'll refer to them as theorem uh, this would be theorem 12.4, uh, part 1. Uh, obviously, this would be theorem 12.4, part 2. And finally, this would be theorem 12.4, part 3. Remember, these numbers are very specific to the Prentice Hall Geometry book, copyright 2009. Probably early, earlier copyrights and even a newer copyright of 2010. Our first example here, example 1T. In the diagram... The radius segment OX bisects the central angle, angle AOB. What can we conclude? Well, from this, we can't conclude very much, but let's take a look at the diagram. This segment, segment OX, bisects this angle, angle AOB. So the first thing that we conclude is that angle AOX, and that would be a central angle, and angle AOX is congruent to angle BOX, and that would be because of the angle bisector theorem. Now, now that we have this established that this angle here, angle AOX, is congruent to angle BOX. We can conclude that chord AX and chord BX are congruent, and that would be because of theorem 12.4, part 1. So we'll conclude that segment AX or chord AX is congruent to segment BX, and that's because of theorem 12.4 part 1. Remember, theorem 12.4 part 1 says, within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent central angles have congruent chords. Well, angle AOX and angle BOX are congruent central angles, therefore their chords are congruent, so we could mark segment AX congruent to segment BX because they are corresponding chords to congruent central angles. And then, from that, we can conclude that arc AX is congruent to arc BX. And that's because of theorem 12.4, part 2. Remember, theorem 12.4, part 2 reads that within a circle or in, a, or in congruent circles, Congruent chords have congruent arcs. So if the chords 
are congruent, then the corresponding or related arcs are congruent. So that's the beginning of this lesson on chords and arcs. Be sure to check back for additional videos on chords and arcs by me, Mr. Pi. If this video has helped you, feel free to leave a comment or rate the video.